So good afternoon, everybody. After lunch, the first panel discussions. So want to ensure that the attention is there toward the panel. Because this part, uh, first of all, I should thank MHI, CMTI, ISC put into the, the conference and uh, selecting the panel members for a wonderful panel discussions, robots as a capital goods, and MHI's vision. I'm really amazed with the, right from the minister to the secretary level and all, everybody in MHI is grounded and connected with the technology and the trends, what is going on. The, robo the, the theme of today's topic is basically on the adoption of robotics in capital goods sector including MSMEs and the large industries, and how do we fuel the growth of manufacturing robots in the country? Means the, the, the goal of Prime Minister, the Atmanirbhar Bharat, how do we make it happen? That's what I understand by this. So just to set some context on the overall discussions, the, some of the challenges what probably for the robot manufacturing in this country is the, the hardware ecosystem. That is number one. And today's robots, most of them, you will agree with me that most of the robots are imported today and what is being deployed in various manufacturing sectors. And the potential to grow in this country, as many people mentioned in the morning discussions as well, we anticipate a very, uh, the, the data and statistics, if you really look at it, last five years, the growth of robotics in the country has doubled. That's almost 100% in the five years. And it won't take another five years to double the current population of robots to increase its presence in the various industries. And if you look at it, you can see the technology like 5G, AI, ML are all getting entangled with the, the robotics and the robot has become an integral part of the Industry 4.0 initiative, uh, what uh, the government of India is also trying to drive through into MSMEs. And today, if you want to increase the propel the growth of robots, as I mentioned earlier, one is the hardware ecosystem. The cost of the adoption has to be lesser. That means we should focus on how do we manufacture this robot at a cheaper cost without sacrificing any quality of the robot, reliability of the robot, and get the better productivity. And we are all today, if you look at India is I will say the population of cobots or robots in the country is very, very low. I, I was saying around six to seven robots per 10,000 people in the manufacturing industry. But you can, as some speakers mentioned in the morning, the lot of areas where robot can penetrate into, what I was, I've been working with medical robotics. Healthcare is a very huge segment service robotics, defense, as well as other service robotics. And manufacturing center, definitely the, the, wherever the repetitive tasks are there and how do we get uh, deployed robotics, yet get the ROI for the manufacturing industry spawn. And with this sort of uh, context, I would like uh, to introduce the panel members Already they have been introduced, but we have got a wonderful panel, uh, starting with the Seelam, Vijay Seelam, is an engineer, entrepreneur, and a product visionary. Wonderful work has been done in manufacturing collaborative robot by him, a platform based out of Hyderabad, and none other than expert from IIT Madras, Professor Ramesh Babu, Sorry, I could not recollect immediately. Professor Ramesh Babu, he is a pioneer and well-renowned professor 
in the area of mission tools last many years, 36 years, and running the center in IIT Madras, AMTDSC. And a uh, lot of work, uh, I'm sure that uh, is being carried out in the center, which will help fuel robot manufacturing in the country. Then we have uh, Pradeep from Lumax, uh, one of the leaders in auto component manufacturers, uses of robot. And um, he is heading and also leading the digital engineering industry 4.0 initiative in the Lumax and the various uh, branches and factories of Lumax. They are the world uh, country's leading auto tire one OEM man, man, uh, product manufacturers for the OEMs. And we have none other than Arun Menon, who is a stalwart and again, the automation, uh, MD of strategy automation. And he is well connected with all the MSMEs and he has got a very good, uh, I will say, on the ground realities of what's happening in the industrial sector and how the robotics can be uh, deployed in various MSMEs. So with this introduction, I think uh, we'll start the panel discussion. We'll start the question to Mr. Arun Menon. The Arun, uh, first question to you, would like to put forward, because uh, I believe that the fueling the growth of robot manufacturers will happen only when MSME adopts robots in their shop floor. So I would like to ask you some of the questions. What are the challenges MSM is facing today for the adoption of the robots in the shop floor? And do you foresee the benefits of robots in the MSM sector, the ROI, and uh, your views on those, I don't know. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Krishnamurti. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a privilege to be here and uh, want to thank uh, the Ministry of Heavy Industries and CMTI for having organized this conference uh, today and tomorrow. It actually speaks volumes on the seriousness of the ministry and the government to kickstart robot manufacturing in India. And uh, as you would have seen in the morning session, uh, we have a responsive government who's trying to see that India becomes self-reliant in robot technology. So we are here to actually discuss on from the MSME's uh, perspective. I uh, represent a MSME, which is manufacturing machine training robots. And uh, we'll, you know, I'll just share a few of my views on how we can, you know, make robots as a capital goods in our country. So coming to MSMEs, I think uh, all of you are aware that MSMEs are the backbone of Indian manufacturing. We have uh, 63 million MSMEs in India, employing around 120 million people. So if you do the math, I think you can easily uh, you know, realize that most of the MSMEs are micro, employing one or two people, then there are small and medium. And uh, they contribute approximately 30% of India's GDP, uh, around 45% of exports, uh, and also around 40% of Indian manufacturing. So MSMEs clearly are the engine of growth in India. How do we make our MSMEs more competitive so that they can you know, produce products of the highest quality which can be exported all over the world. And I think the answer lies in adoption of uh, Industry 4.0, which we know consists of uh, artificial intelligence, M2M, machine-to-machine communication, also consists of robotics, advanced automation, so and of course IoT. So RK's question to me is, what are the challenges that MSMEs face in adopting these technologies? So clearly one of the challenges that uh, MSMEs face is, you know, are there successful case studies in MSMEs which MSMEs can straight away take and adopt in their manufacturing practices? Uh, just want to step back and tell you our story as a manufacturer of machine tending robots. We started in 2017, and we make machine tending robots primarily for CNC turning centers. 
when we launched our product in 2017 we were under the impression that mike or our customer is a large company uh, somebody who has maybe 500 employees uh, at least 500 or uh, maybe 100 to 500 cnc turning centers in their shop floor and we were pleasantly surprised that my first customer was actually an msme uh, a person who could take a decision straight away whether this made economic sense to him or not so msmes adopting robotics adopting automation is something that uh, you know we have to understand that they are all there ready and waiting the question is uh, do they get the right solution something which is reliable something that uh, performs at the highest levels and are they price competitive so which actually brings us to you know our question of the day why should we manufacture robots in india so the answer in my mind is we have to be self reliant we cannot be always depending on the outside for robots to come into india i think in terms of percentage it should Uh, be more than 95% of the robots are imported into india secondly i think there is a myth that robots take away jobs but what about if we do robots in india what about the number of jobs we are creating we are going to create a lot more of jobs if we manufacture these robots in india the third thing is you know as a country we are a third world country we are a developing country we need robots at affordable prices so when i talk about affordable prices uh, i have interacted with several msmes there is an eagerness to go ahead and purchase and deploy but there is a lack of financial capability so if we can give them highly reliable products at good competitive prices i don't see why uh, msmes cannot adopt robots into their manufacturing and why msmes cannot manufacture robots in india msmes are known to be frugal in innovation we do have quite a few msme msmes manufacturing robots in india especially mobile robots but on the fixed robots there are still a limited number of manufacturers so if we can give them support which i think the panel will deliberate i am sure that uh, you know we can have msmes not only as a consumer of indian robots but also as a manufacturer of indian robots we need uh, highly trained manpower to uh, adopt robotic uh, technologies on the shop floor i am sure other panels are debating on this on how we can get uh, qualified manpower to uh, you know operate these robots maintain these robots and uh, we see that uh, the moment you go to msmes and tell them about paybacks of less than 2 years that's our experience when we give them paybacks of less than 2 years the decision making is pretty fast so if you can bring that payback period to 18 months or maybe 12 months i think the adoption will just accelerate uh, i think we have a very very bright future in front of us the government is taking uh, making the right moves in encouraging robot manufacturing in india and i think if we form a good ecosystem here i am i'm very confident that india can be one of the leading uh, robot manufacturers in the world thank you thanks arun for a wonderful uh, background setting on how msm is going to adopt and you also touched upon some of the challenges so i would like to ask uh, pradeep uh being in charge of digital manufacturing and industry for auto initiative at lumax i am sure that he is involved in various implementation of robots in the shop floor and uh, how can the robot systems basically contribute in your manufacturing processes and uh, what sort of resistance you have to adopt the robots in the in the shop floor and how it has benefited you as an organization and uh, would like to hear from you on those aspects
Thank you, Krishnamurti San, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, CMTI, for giving this opportunity. It's a very important question that uh, how manufacturing addresses robotics in the future. In fact, robotics is going to be the future of manufacturing. So we have various uh, opportunities that we have uh, basically in our approach. First is automotive of uh, automation of uh, you know repetitive tasks. We can do that. So this means that the repetitive processes in our assembly lines is replaced by uh, robotics. Second is coming to autonomous uh, guided vehicles. Basically, the material movements in the shop floor are going to be. It was very, uh, very much manual based. Now today with the automation, autonomous uh, guided vehicles, it is easy that it goes to the destination on time as, as programmed, carrying the right amount of material to the required manufacturing place. Then comes the uh, precision and quality in terms of quality control. With robotics, it is needless to say that the quality of uh, production Manufacturing has been to the ultimate level because we have faced, we have been, uh, you know, achieving zero defects in our manufacturing when we are supplying to OEMs, and that was a challenge earlier. Coming to predictive maintenance, yes, with the use, users of sensors and programs, it has helped in trying to when the number of shots in molding or when the number of shots in you know you know in the, the cycle is completed it it gives an indication that this machine or this robo is uh, to be undergoing a predictive maintenance so it becomes a advanced signal for sudden breakdowns augmented reality definitely assists people to work in complex situations wherein the guidance is given by the system, AI to do the process right. And then we have the most important thing is the flexible manufacturing system, which is the ultimate. If you see in most of the automobile industry industries, you will find a lot of uh, robotics, robots introduced for flexible manufacturing. It means, Based on the program that is defined, based on the processes that are defined, the robots conducts the activity with zero defect and zero failure. Coming to collaborative robots, I think this is one of the important things, the way forward, having the interaction between human and robots. Because today robots are available on standard basis, but now connecting it with the process, with the human touch, human element, and the you know, robo makes a big difference as a game changer. If many of you have visited Toyota, you must have seen how the seat, because I was uh, heading the seat manufacturing uh, plant in Toyota Boshuko, how the seat is, the robo places the seat inside the vehicle and the man does the fitting inside the vehicle. So it's a fantastic thing, which saves a lot of time and builds in accuracy. And finally, on advanced uh, analytics and on and optimization because robots generate a lot of data with respect to cycle time and uh, the results with respect to the uh, quality parameters so with this uh, data we are able to do analysis and take countermeasures to how we can improve the productivity how we can improve the quality and how we can reduce cycle times and change over times this really gives an edge on cost competitiveness with respect to uh, products in the market. Thank you. Thank you, Pradeep. Uh, one more question is uh, your touch upon the ROI and uh, what you feel that uh, the return investment on the capital equipment when you invest from the automation on the robot in the plant, right? And is there any challenge to get management approvals when you propose uh, automation for the shop floor? Yeah, Krishnamurti san, that is a big challenge today because a lot of robots are available which are imported or maybe assembled on CKD basis. The cost of the robo will be almost half the or equal to a machine itself. 
So this is becoming, you know, the return on investment basically becomes a longer when, when people are wanting to go for a robo. The intent is right, but the uh, cost per se is a real challenge which we need to address. I think with the robots being developed in our country with localization can give a lot of benefits and designing it to a particular process because what is happening today, we are getting standard robots. So in the process, what happens, the adaptability, the, the change, uh, by the cost on change, the cost on training on people, then serviceability, all these things adds to the cost which directly goes into the product and hence makes it a, a, a difficult uh, game change. So I think this ind indigenization would really help in uh, doing a lot of, bring a lot of, lot of changes. I just want to give an example. Earlier in one of our, in one of our you know, units, we had eight uh, molding machines run by uh, eight people per shift, that is 24 people uh, you know, in a day. But when we introduce these robots, today we are running with one person per shift with three people running these eight machines in 24 hours. And the efficiency earlier was around 75 to 80%, even though we are a TPM company. And, and with robots, the efficiency has shot up more than 92%. So I think that is the real challenge that we have as to affordability in terms of investing on robots. So we have very few companies who are manufacturing robots in the country today. And the dream of the ministry and also the country's vision is how to really accelerate this growth. So we have Professor over here, IIT Madras. And uh, I would like to ask one question to Professor, that what we are seeing, Professor, is the import content today of these manufacturers are much higher. I was made to understand that is as high as 70%. So unless we reduce the import content, manufacture subcomponents and systems like gearboxes, encoders, sensors, etc within the country, it will be very difficult for, as Arun and Pradeep mentioned, to get the cost point where in which the adaptability increases. Unless the population, the demand increases, the manufacturing companies, though they start manufacturing robot, the cost point needs to be bring in. I'm sure that IIT Madras has got a lot of initiatives towards this, Professor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Krishnamurthy. First of all, let me Ministry for supporting our activities at uh, IITM Research Park in the name of uh, Advanced Manufacturing Technology Development Center, which was also mentioned by both the ministers and uh, the other no, speakers. I think before I go into it, I want to give a perspective on how an academician looks at the role of applications. I think when I started my journey in 1980, I was using Pro. A small robot with a few sensors. We just use it with the teach pendant or uh, some programming. Uh, yeah, teach pendant or a programming uh, systems. Then we went into uh, Indo German collaboration, gave us an opportunity to get the robots from Germany, Siemens Manutech robot. It's a gantry robot. Again, we were using those robots. Then around 95, one of my colleague who returned from USA. He said that why, why don't we use these robots for uh, construction planning activities? And he returned from uh, University of Texas and uh, he said, I want to collaborate with you because I am in the civil and you are in the mechanical with automation. In fact, if you look at the construction automation, agriculture and all of them are at a, at a very, very low level, even industry 2.0, I can say. Then immediately I jumped in, I said that, yes, let us do some work on uh, uh, path tools in the sense you know when you have multiple robots you may ask why multiple if you look at uh, the construction activities you require a huge robots if you want to carry those robots from one station or one city to the other city there's so many constraints you have the bridges and uh, you have the constraints on that normally they split the work into collab uh, the cooperative mode that is a smaller robots which can easily be and then uh, you can uh, pack them and then install them there and they do the uh, cooperative work. We did a lot of work on all of them. Many PhDs and many students have graduated it. So then in uh, 
at some point i said that we should develop the robots in india itself that was in 96 to 98 and uh, k the center for artificial intelligence robotics was uh, manufacturing a multi axis controller cart i talked to them because uh, the head was our own student from iit madras then mtab is a msme so i told him will you be able to manufacture this uh, robots if i give you the money and also the controller cart then he said yes why not we, we have been uh, doing reverse engineering we will do it we did that it's a different type of robot which you normally see it in the construction environment it is a crane type manipulator we call it. so just it you no know, boom is there then high sting is there then hook at the end etc so we successfully build those robots with the help of a msme who doesn't have expertise in forward engineering of a robot i said it is a reverse engineered one but they have built it and then given it to us and we produce our phd's in sharing the load etc why i am saying all this is how an academician looks at the robots uh, to begin with and it went on went on and then uh, companies from japan also were uh, using the robots for automation in sheet metal when i saw all of them they they're not you know very great things that you need to import them so when uh, the mhi wanted uh, some projects to be floated under this uh, scheme for capital goods enhancement you know scheme so we invited uh, the partners through the imtma uh, to the associations because if i have to go to the market and ask anybody that you please help me so they don't have a faith in the academician for several reasons i'm not saying that we are good or bad so then uh, i have already completed a project with the micromatic which is the s group and we converted that into a next generation precision grinder which is on par with the imported machine using the forward you know approach which they liked it so why i am saying all that is through collaborations with association with the company and with the academic background we could finally build these robots with the help of uh, mtab who has put in some money initially they were quite apprehensive that whether anything will come whether we should give 20% or not but as it went on for uh, one and a half years or two years they got the confidence now we have built the 6 kg 10 kg and uh, without anybody's money for some other tanki project we have built up to 25 kg why i am saying this one is how do we build the confidence you know with your team so this gave us you know a pathway is that we need to collaborate with many of them if you have to build all the units today we are working with several industries in order to make aggregates and another one is the system integrators and the third one is the end users okay you build the robo who is going to use it so hence you know our approach is a consortium approach where in the aggregate developers wherever they are there we have to identify them we have to ask them to come onto the platform and ask them to work with you know the academia wherever they are there whatever robo we want to develop it we can definitely do it in the sense if you look at the machine tool industry in india over the last four decade they have gone to a level wherein we are exporting the machines and when we can do that why can't we do it in robotics though we have started late but then if we have this sort of a collaborative platform it's a physical platform on which everyone should come together with some interest of building these robots and then delivering it to the end users who can test validate and finally build it so i have a great confidence in building these robots in india provided we create an ecosystem we create a platform at different locations in this country with the main focus on industrial use or service or anything either for the agricultural you know applications we are working it for fruit harvesting we didn't want to take any money the landlords have said that we will give you the money only thing is you give the directions etc so when we can do that project definitely we can do many more projects I think my perception is whatever you say the import content 70% we imported in the first project 6 kg and 10 kg now we are trying to reverse this one 30% is the import and 70% is going to be indigenously built mechanical electrical electronics and everything i am hopeful that in the next two years you may see the range of robots which are meant ex- exclusively for the industrial applications i know many of them are developing it for various other applications like healthcare or maybe medical you no know, the, the surgery etc etc i am hopeful that if we all put our thoughts together and make a framework which is going to really gel well with almost all the academicians wherever they are there 
I think they can come together and then collaborate in order to bring out that sort of an ecosystem which is going to reverberate in course of time. That's my perception. Thank you very much for giving the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. I think wonderfully well said. And the academia's involvement in helping the industry to get the cost lower, that's the biggest challenge uh, what both the panel members over here, Arun and Pradeep, both of them felt that the cost is at a high point. As a robot manufacturer, we have Vijay, who is manufacturing collaborator robot. So as a manufacturer of collaborator robot, Vijay, my question to you is, what are the challenges you are facing uh, in the development phase, number one? Point number two is, when you uh, go and approach industry to adopt your product, so what sort of pushback you are getting? Because you are Indian robot manufacturers, we have KUKA, Siemens, and many others, Universal Robotics, and others. Uh, whenever an Indian robot manufacturing company approaches a customer, first thing is, they ask you, is how many numbers you are in the field? 100? Impossible, right? You have to sell the first one. So that's the challenge, probably, I think, uh, the robot manufacturing phase. I would like to hear from you, Vijay. You have been successful in uh, man design, manufacture this collaborator robot. So over to you, Vijay. Hello. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Krishnam. And also, uh, uh, thanks to MHI and also CMTC for having me here. It's really an honor uh, to be on this uh, panel. Uh, let me just start with a disclaimer here. You know, I am not a person who believes in lights out factory although that might be a little bit a contradictory statement for somebody who's making robots. And uh, let me tell you, like, you know, let me substantiate why I'm saying that, you know, and our own story of how it has led us into manufacturing, uh, becoming a robotics manufacturer, you know. All right. See, one is when we say robots, right, it basically conjures both fear and excitement. One fear in certain sections, like you know, policymakers or those who are in charge of creating the job in the country, right? Like loss of jobs and excitement on behalf. When I speak to the businesses, right? They think I think robots can really fundamentally create new opportunities or new and profitable business models for them. You know. So now the question is, what is? Uh, uh, like, you know, what is the truth, you know? What is the fact and fiction, right? So uh, let me just subsend, and we have begun our job. Uh, in the morning, I think Professor Ranganathan has said, like, you know, robot by itself is pretty dumb. So what makes it intelligent? And not a single day goes by, uh, at, least, uh, at least for us, those of us who are engineers in the technical or even in the general media, not hearing about AI or chat GPT or LLM and all these things, right? But now when it comes to robots, right, they're truly the ones which bring AI into the physical world, right? Make your factories intelligent, flexible, scalable, you know? So robots can truly have a transformative effect on manufacturing, just like what computers have done for white collar work or office, right? Today, you can't even imagine a front office person not having a computer, you know? You just simply can't imagine a person, I mean, you're handicapped without your smartphone or a laptop or a personal computer, you know? Now, think about that, what robots can do in manufacturing. And one example for me to substantiate, I won't elaborate on this one, what ATM has done for uh, banking, has ATM taken away the jobs or has it created more jobs in banking? And today, every bank you go, like, you know, uh, you don't have your relationship manager, uh, the same relationship manager after six months. There's so much of attrition. So, in fact, it has created more jobs, you know, but more, right? Taken away, like, you know, basically the grant, the teller job from the person, you know, making their jobs more really focused. And the same thing in robots. 
Now, let me just come back to what got us started into robots, you know. Uh, when we started in 2011, we didn't think about manufacturing robots. We went into SMEs. The first and foremost question that got us right, like, you know, why our SMEs are not as competitive as the SMEs in Germany, Japan, France, or South Korea, you know? Why we are not able to get the same quality output or the productivity? And for a year, we spent, like, you know, in different trades, cataloging where and how people make mistakes, especially in skill trades, like, say, in welding, or in fabrication, or even in woodworking. So we carefully cataloged all those. And initially, we thought, like, you know, probably we'll bring some technology into the hand tools. But then we said, like, why would a Hitachi or somebody would allow us to uh, poke an outside technology into their products, right? So that's got uh, started into what would be the most general purpose robot that can we can put into the existing setups, you know. And now, uh, as Arun has said, like, you know, uh, uh, articulated very well about the need for automation in SMEs, you know. And if you look at manufacturing, 95% of manufacturing happens in SMEs, right from screws, nuts and screws, right? So, and it's not just in India, it's across the world. And SME is one of the least automated uh, uh, market segment across the world. And you see, like, you know, there's been a lot of robots, especially in automotive and semiconductors and all that, but not much automation in SMEs. But now, this is very important. Uh, now, robotics is at the cusp because the manufacturing, the nature of manufacturing itself is changing. Now, you just imagine about what happened 30 years back to the computer industry. The same thing is happening in manufacturing today because there's a lot of modularization that is happening. That means a lot of power is getting into the SMEs. So what used to be like in you know, manufacturing used to revolve around a lot of big companies and a lot of chain used to revolve around them. But now that is slowly transforming into product clusters. And today you see like there are at least by the last count, at least 250 to 300 EV manufacturers, be it scooters, bicycles, electric mobility, and all that. And that has happened because a lot of modularization and a lot of SMEs are becoming module players. And now, so today product innovation and design is becoming very important and the supply chains are becoming very dynamic. And now manufacturing has to play the role, you know, because this is becoming integral part of that strategy for the SMEs. And now, now coming to like, you know, uh, uh, the difficulty of manufacturing robots or as, a, or as a robotic manufacturer in India, definitely I think we lack in the ecosystem out here in India because we don't have a lot of quality component manufacturers or maybe they have not just looked into that because we simply didn't have product as a viable technology that companies would adopt. So, and a lot of, and 75 or 80 percent or more than that is imported today, you know, uh, as an aggregate, right, as a robot, as a product itself. And it's predominantly systems engineering what is happening here in India. And now, I wouldn't be too worried about that. We don't have a system at this point of time because any product innovation, if you look everywhere in the world, it hasn't started with the component manufacturers. It has started with the systems engineering, you know. So systems engineering and product innovation has to be put upfront because if you talk about components, this is putting the cart before the horse. And if the product innovation happens, because now this is going to be very unique to India, right? Like, you know, because the Indian market is unique. The SMEs are unique here. Their needs are unique. So we need to focus on that and bring the products to the market. And if the market becomes substantial, then definitely the component ecosystem will automatically follow. And as Arun has said, MSMEs also can become manufacturers of some of these components, you know. And just to give you some numbers to think about, because we go by like an incremental 30% increase every year, okay, the robotics market is going, right? But that's, I feel that's probably not the true metric that we have to look at if we want to look out at the potential of the next 10 years or 20 years. So think about this, there are 300 million manufacturing workers across the world and $4.5 trillion in wage costs. And by, uh, 
one metric there are about 75 million jobs across the world especially in skilled jobs and skilled jobs is one place across the world where they have very difficult time uh, getting manpower and in fact i was uh, a couple of years back when i was talking to a lot of smes uh, one consistent complaint was they don't have skilled manpower or they can't get skilled manpower or they train and then they leave so this is a perennial problem which affects their quality and productivity and of course like you know absenteeism and a lot of issues right so complaint across the world and now coming to india there are at least 3.5 million jobs in the skilled uh, in the skilled area and one example I can give you is like, you know, I was in Kolhapur. We are looking at a foundry manufacturer, and foundry happens to be, especially sand casting, of a very highly polluted uh, segments. And uh, you were saying, like, you know, I think uh, the day will come in three years where people don't want to work in a foundry, but they would be very happy to work in a mall in an AC showroom, you know, where they would get paid better than in a foundry. So, that's the uh, i think it's it's a, just a matter of days you know because the service economy is going much faster than the manufacturing economy so this is where i live like you know i think there's a tremendous potential for uh, robots and one last count like you know if we look at the numbers itself even if we automate five percent or augment like in even with manufacturing growing in india there's no dearth of uh, jobs it can be a four billion dollar market Yeah, thanks, Vijay, for a wonderful discussion and insight into the challenges what you're facing, especially on the component manufacturing, etc., and the cluster formation of clusters, things like that. A good suggestions. So, Arun, a question to you back again. Now you heard Professor Ramesh Babu speaking. Vijay is speaking, responding to a need of the MSMEs. But Vijay mentioned a wonderful point that MSMEs themselves can become manufacturers some of the critical components, right? So how do you feel a collaborative initiatives or associations or collaborative research with the academia with the help of, I'm sure, MHI is more than enough to come forward and, and help financially the MSM is to become a very good, uh, what you call capable manufacturers of subsystem component. So, what do you feel about the formation of MSM cluster and also adoption of the robotics to even to make the components of the robot? Yeah, it's a good question, RK. Um, just to react to what uh, Vijay said, I, my experience when I have been to several Indian industries is, uh, you know, they have machines idling because people are not there. So this whole myth of uh, robots replacing jobs is actually non-existent in my opinion. Because uh, I don't know how many of you have seen this uh, movie of Charlie Chaplin of modern times in 1936. We are like now 100 years almost after 1936. And we are still expecting our workers to do a monotonous job every day and you're saying that nobody shows up at your gate, are you surprised? Come on, wake up. I mean, it's about time that you realize that people are showing up there because they don't have another option, another alternative. So I think, uh, you know, the way to go forward is only to automate. There's, there's, there's no other way. It's staring you in the face. So uh, the way that MSMEs will possibly adopt is when they see successful case studies of this having been done in their, uh, you know, in their peer companies. So to answer what RK was saying, how do we, uh, you know, encourage both manufacturing as well as adoption of robotics in MSMEs? So our company is a member of two industry associations, one in Bangalore and one in Mysore. But we see that the industry associations can do much more than only representing, you know, tariff hikes to the government. You know, our electricity went up, our water bill went up, etc. How about having a member in the industry association 
who is in charge of industry 4.0 and uh, you know you present almost on a weekly basis or on a fortnightly basis successful uh, implementations of industry 4.0 among your member companies there if you have any component manufacturers please ask them to come and make a presentation in the industry forums to say hey we are making this component we'll be happy to supply it to you this is the range of products that we have so i think in my opinion industry associations can go a long long way to promote the use of robotics as well as uh, promote indian manufacturers of indian components we are also a member of a cluster called mechatronica cluster so uh, similar clusters can be formed for robotics so if we have a cluster which consists of manufacturers uh, of robots consumers of robots end users like uh, pradeep uh, you know plumax large companies small companies academia like uh, professor ramesh babu uh, research scholars i think there are several in this room here uh, and students it would be a wonderful platform to interact share knowledge and uh, you know share experiences so that we promote this in a much much larger way in our country uh the clusters i'm also aware that there are some some places in bangalore itself where they form clusters which have maker labs so the maker lab can have prototyping facilities it can have testing facilities calibration facilities simulation so this is what encourages see for example uh, like um vijay is a msme manufacturer of robots so are we but it's very very difficult for us to invest in everything from technology development right down to testing and validation so if we have industry associations and clusters coming forward to do this a lot of financial burden as well as administrative overload can be taken up by the associations and clusters so i think uh, this is a way that i would like to suggest that we can go forward thank you thank you, thank you arun uh as you all know that uh, we are very good supposed to be very good in software aml and all that uh, software centric tools and the robot is becoming also a software defined robot so a lot of software content into that and things like that a lot of advancements unless we have some unique advantage in the robotic design and we cannot compete with other imported robot manufacturers apart from the reliability manufacturability and the cost so i would like to ask a question to pradeep that what does he he think on the latest trends and in the area of the technology cutting edge technology what can be adopted in a uh, your manufacturing segment so the changes which coming so the changes that company should prepare to stay competitive in the market basically is one is to uh, i would suggest to embrace research and development because uh, investing in robust research and development initiatives to stay forefront of robotics and automation technologies is the key collaborating with universities research institutions and technology partners would really look in look into the, the uh, access to expertise and facilitate technological advancements second is to foster a culture of innovation create an organizational culture that encourages innovation and embraces change employees we need to promote to think creatively experiment on new ideas and foster collaboration and knowledge sharing between departments such as engineering manufacturing and it third is develop a strategic part partnership especially with the experts get into companies which are innovative which are already doing innovative products and processes that is a technological uh, breakthrough 
then we have uh, upskill and reskill in workforce there is a change but as uh, you know arun san said there is a dearth of skilled people getting skill in the future even though india is such a populated uh, country we have manpower issues we have retainership uh, retainship uh, you know retaining people issues and we have people attrition going out so in from this perspective i think uh, having robotics and developing the skill in this line would definitely help focus on flexibility and adaptability in terms of robotics so this includes uh, design production lines and facilitates uh, you know facilitate facilities that can accommodate changes in technology and adopt new manufacturing uh, techniques enhance uh, data analysis uh, capabilities monitor and adopt emerging technologies so this really would help to bring in adaptation and change to face challenges in implementing uh, robotics in, in in the industries thanks sir pradeep sir professor ramesh babu one question to you the the academy has doing an excellent job in creating the developing the skills and things like that and the robot to one of the resistance of adopting the robot in manufacturing industry is the cost of running the robot and also once the robot is deployed that is for a specific component now how do we we need to really create capabilities in designing multi different different types of grip and adopt the cobo for multiple operations and things like that and also on the skill development point of view i'm sure that iid madras is doing tremendous job would like to throw some light from your side of what what is your suggestions to increase the skills and also improve the design skills on the accessories or robotics like grippers and things like hello hello yeah, i think it's a very pertinent question for the reason that we wanted to use the robots for different applications even though we built robots in the phase 1 though we could not deploy it for many applications except for one or two because msme companies have their own reach to supply it to various institutions academic institutions who are using it for training education etc the second one is some of the companies uh, like a building the fabricators and others you know need uh, robots because of non availability of uh, people so he started uh, bringing out the applications around the robo which needed certain other elements such as the grippers and maybe tomorrow you require the monitoring systems then you need to make the systems as autonomous etc in the sense once you make a building block that building block can help us to identify the variety of applications which can be built by many like these are all the various uh, units which have been built in the uh, any machine tool industry in manufacturing sector for either gripping you know a component or something like that so my opinion is the skill development can happen parallelly in various sphere the focus should be on design development and proving rather than leaving it at the design stage which is normally happening in most of the schools thinking that oh we will bring out a creative designs yes no doubt creative designs are important but creativity is not needed in such items you know everywhere you can adopt you know those items which are uh, elsewhere used in the machine uh, tool systems for the automation applications or there are many things if you look at the strategic sector or defense sector etc so in my opinion the skill development for building the robots for the applications is more important than developing the skills to design the robo operate the robo programming the robo i think most of the schools are doing that for many reasons in the sense we don't have any other application in our hand so at least let them understand what is a robo what are the various elements of a robo what is the kinematics of robo dynamics of ro robo which we can easily you know teach and educate the young students so i think this is where the industry collaboration with the academia and with an end user having a specific application in mind should uh, uh, bring the problems you know to the uh, table to the academia so then the problems will become more of interest i'll give you one case wherein 
I think one gentleman came through Murugappa group. I think most of you know about Murugappa group. And he is a landlord of more than 120, 150 acres in Andhra. So he came to me and then said that I have seen lots of Israel, Australia, USA, New Zealand. But those items are not you know, useful for our Indian environment. So our fields are only small fields of 5 acres, 10 acres, and we don't need it. So we, I think the MHI also has promoted the skill development through the internships, etc. So we engaged about 10 interns in two batches. We just cracked the problems one by one. One is when you want to do the harvesting, the image genome you know, processing, identification of the ripened fruit is more important than plucking it and then putting it into the basket. So we did solve that one. Then he said that I don't need anybody's money. I'll give you the money for developing the manipulator. Now we started working with them. He will come and then sit with our guys. So the skill development should happen like that, rather than just you know giving a problem. A problem. Want to solve the entire world problem? Not solve it. What uh, is happening between the? I think we always say that you know, we have the capability, and uh, we can develop these solutions for everything. No. Generic to the specific is extremely important for making the students more stronger and easily uh, making them as an entrepreneurial. Otherwise, they depend on the software jobs. They go to multinationals. They keep moving from one company to the other company without much stability. So this is where the skill development should start from school. And from school to the college, college to other places will naturally happen, which may happen in course of time. So my opinion is not making the designs for specific application or a generic you know, applications, but then you have to bring the problem to the table. And then we have to work with the both the stakeholders and also with the young students. So then the amount of knowledge and the amount of confidence that they get is going to be extremely high. That's my experience with all my students who have been trained. And they're not from IIT. Let me frankly tell you, they're all from Tier 2, Tier 3. I don't want to say that the IITians only will do the job. Tier 2, Tier 3 guys will come, spend three to six months, and they're doing a, a decent job. And finally, the customer is also very happy. So this is where we need to stretch out you know, beyond our reach. Then I think we'll be able to do much. Thank you, Professor. So I think I already got a chat that you know, we have to wind up faster. So it won't be good, it won't be nice if I don't give opportunity for the audience also to ask some pointed questions to the panelists. So we have eminent panels over here with various expertise. So I invite a couple of questions from the audience so that we'll be able to. Check, check. Should I go ahead? Yeah, you should ask. Okay. Because the question that was true. Because uh, actually, I wanted to look at the ministry also. What we heard uh, from this respected uh, uh, joint secretary was that there is a lot of funds available from the ministry also for the development of the industry. And uh, I need to put the question then to Mr. Menon and uh, Vijay also, because Mr. Menon made the comment that being uh, resources may not be available for new developments. So I don't know, can these funds that are available at uh, MHI, can they be used by the industry? That was my question, actually. I don't know. We have from representation from the ministry. Yeah. Is a question to the panelists or the yeah. MHI? So I will. I am part of uh, the phase two program of MHI, yeah. uh, running by MHI on specific technologies on robotics, IoT, and things like that. And my experience is like this: MHI is already uh, funding it through academia, and the industry has to put some skin on it. And always, I found the interest industries has got some reservations. What will be the outcome? I think Professor Ramesh Babu also mentioned about it, uh, about the entire uh, the reservations to fund. 
the 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 in generally the mindset of the entrepreneurs i mean vijay is here i'm sure that he will also hear some views after i complete this is how much they can invest on r and d and how quickly like capital industry the manufacturing industry is expecting an roi how quickly the return investment on the investment is going to come how soon so there is a lot of skepticism into the outcome of the research that number one point number two is it's a chicken leg story right the consumption if you look at the consumption of robotics in the country right though everybody thinks that it is going to exponentially rise by 5x to next next 5 years time it's assumption and it based on some judgment and statistics and data unless we form uh, i think it's a wonderful suggestion arun was mentioning about the cluster formation of robotics and also involved with the users of the robot the challenges that face and and academia and the robot manufacturers i think we need to have a national level cluster maybe multiple clusters to focus on this if i we don't do that even if that much i fund said and there is no visibility of fructification of the fund being utilized i am sure that ministry and government of india will also ask i gave you 1000 crores what is the outcome nothing is happening how many companies came out that's a question to me i i went on asking this country though we claim that we are great in software we are great in manufacturing once it comes to product the mindset is totally different so that's what i will say as vijay to respond let more i will also i would like to respond to uh, one or two points arun also has raised it see in fact if you look at the amtdc amtdc has an ecosystem wherein i am not directly interacting with only partners the association is the one who is promoting it extensively since 2008 because they are with me backing me supporting me in whatever troubles i face it because an academician cannot face the industry immediately you know because see your interests are different from our interests you want to know tomorrow but i cannot give you tomorrow i need some time so that is where the industry associations like imtma has helped us tremendously number one number two is the testing and validation cannot be done by a cmti having the amttf has supported us extensively to give the feedback on what we have developed it how it is working etc so this sort of an ecosystem is built over 15 years it's not in one or two years 2008 when we started with some funding from the government of india from psas office it was a pre competitive r&d it was not a competitive r&d but when we succeeded with the ecosystem built we got the confidence that the same ecosystem can be emulated to make it much bigger and broader that is where i feel that no some people have to just look at it see with open eyes without having any any you know fear or see the fears are always there i'm telling you that every day i have a fear of you know delivering something to the industry but then when you have an ecosystem supporting me i can just leave the burden on them and get the solution from them also in whatever way it is it is not that i am going to perform a miracle i am also a human being you know who has to sustain the pressures also so that is where i feel that the ecosystems have to be built in different places with a commitment of delivering something not utilizing the funds this is where i feel that no we need to have that sort of a change in the mindset of everybody so that the next generation can uh, really benefit from all our experiences and then guidance etc that is my feeling that <laughs> so uh, i'll just add uh, a few points here see markets don't wait for us and entrepreneurship is basically you have seen the opportunity and you want to go at it very fast and for us it took almost 10 years you know to get to where we are to bring really a competitive product to the market you know and that's the kind of uh work that requires especially in deep tech and now no vc is interested in investing in a company like it yes of course once you are successful everybody wants to come but then it's a 10 year journey not just for us i think i'm sure for a lot of companies who are into robotics because i think today you want to hear about the nice 
glossy story, you know, but what's behind it, right? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. But this has to be a fortuitous collaboration between the company which is making the product, the end user, and also the institutions and the academics, right? And the institutions could be the funding agencies from government like MHI, DRDO, or your academic, uh, where they bring a lot of like, you know, the forward looking research, like say, especially in AI, ML, or uh, uh, analytics, deep analytics, which can be converged with robotics. So I think they come at different stages. If you ask me on day one, no, probably I have to get into the market and prove my metal even before I can approach the funding agencies or, and obviously I have to, you know, so uh, we need some revenue stream, you know. So I think these are like a bit of a catch-22 situation for us. And for me, right, like, you know, I know the, uh, the joint secretary is here and he is listening. So what I would say is one, I think you can't just give a grant to the company just like that because you can't choose the winners, but can we, as an MHI, because the mandate is like, you know, to, to help the industry grow. So can we increase the adoption? That could be a, actually a eliminating one big barrier, you know, in terms of the SMEs, right? Uh, I'm just out of the blue, I'm just giving, I'm, I'm, if he brings a certain amount to invest in the technology, you know, will the government also help him to adopt that technology? This could be a big, because the other day, I think there was a company which asked me, do we get any uh, uh, grants or any uh, help from the government if I'm going to introduce robots into my ecosystem, you know? So this could be helping companies like us in an indirect way. Nicely mentioned about it. I think Joint Secretary is also hearing all the comments. We'll put together all the suggestions of the panel members and send it across to you. The, the challenge, what I, I could, just to conclude the session, at this point of time, we are running out of time. Sir, sir may I add a couple of points, please? Yeah. Thank you. Last question from the audience. I, I'm not asking question. I'll probably add three, four points, which I thought uh, will add value. Hi, Arun. Yeah. Vijay, we might. Please, please. Um, so my name is Yogesh Kumar. I'm from de facto robotics and automation. I just wanted to put some numbers to the discussion that we were having. See, uh, 2021, the post-COVID year, saw a rise of 31% in the annual uh, global robot market. So out of which a majority of that went to China. Almost 30% of those robots went to China, 5% to Japan. 10% to Americas and the rest of the countries, the rest of the robots. So Asia being the biggest market, our share, the Indian share was probably one tenth of China. I'll want to put in some other metrics. Globally, um, they, they measure the robot population with um, number of robots per 10,000 factory employees. So this is a very interesting metric. The global average, uh, is 129 uh, robots per 10,000 factory employees. Europe stands at 129 robots. Asia, 156. USA, 117. Any guess from the audience how much would be India at? You mentioned about it. Four to seven. Four to five. Yeah. So we, sorry, I missed that. So we have a huge scope, uh, you know, on the robots. Also, Vijay mentioned about he doesn't believe in lights out factory. Um, one of the major uh, robot manufacturers, uh, Fanok, their Japanese factory is a model for you know uh, lights out factory. Every Friday, they turn off all the lights. The production runs. Robots manufacture robots throughout the weekend. So that might not be a very far off thing uh, in India. Probably we are a few years behind, but that's something which will uh, happen. Third thing is to answer to Mr. Rajesh Nath, you mentioned about uh, you know, the, the grants from the government. China, see, globe, in India, we have about eight ten most prominent global robot brands. Okay, and of course, we have uh, new brands like uh, Swaya coming in. China alone has more than 100 robotic companies, and they're funded by the government. So this is something which our country, we should also look at, you know, how our 
the government can uh, uh, promote these upcoming companies and support localization of these robots. So you also mentioned about um, uh, component getting locally from India. Now this is a question that again, once again, a point to ponder to all of us. We, we have Boeing, Airbus, all these guys coming, getting components from India. We are able to deliver very high quality parts to these big players. Why not make it for ourselves, for our own products? Okay, uh, just so I'll just conclude the session because we are running out of time again. What works for China, Japan, US need not work for India. Please understand that is not a what is happening in the all around the world is going to work here. India is a diversified country with its own challenges. But I like the point what you mentioned about the government involvement in the Chinese industry and hence the Chinese market share in the robot globally is much, much higher. Uh, I'm sure that government of India and uh, Joint Secretary who's sitting here will definitely listening to all the conversations. Uh, we would like to recommend, we'll sit together after this discussion, few minutes, and put forward our thoughts, points, what we already deliberated. And I'm sure that government of India is very positive in ensuring that the country is getting into the manufacturing world and don't lose the rays of the robotics revolutions. And uh, with that, I think I should like to thank all the panel members on behalf of everybody, CMTI, ISC, and Government of India, thank you very much.